this presentation, we'll discuss the properties of a drug receptor interaction. The first property of the drug receptor interaction is the saturability or point of saturation. When we say point of saturation, that refers to the point at which every receptor is bound to the drug. So this happens because the, there is a finite or a limited number of receptors per cell or per weight of tissue to which a drug can bind. This diagram shows the binding curve or the saturative curve for a particular drug. So what is the importance of this uh, binding curve? So again, uh, the, the x-axis would represent the drug concentration in milligram per kilogram. And the y-axis represents the number or the percent of the receptors that are bound to the drug. So the importance of this is this, this can be used to show a drug's affinity for a receptor. So when we are going to increase the dose or the concentration of the drug that is administered, we can also, we can also see that there is also an increase you know, in the number of receptors that are bound to the particular drug to the extent that the saturation will be reached. So when we say uh, 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 at saturation, this means that all the receptors are already bound to the drug so that no matter how much more concentration you, know, you add. So for example, um, you are going to add you no. Know, uh, another dose of uh, this particular drug, the binding curve, so as you can see here, the binding curve will not increase and it, be, it comes now to a plateau. So when the drug reaches the saturation, that is already the maximum binding, meaning that it has already bound to all of its receptors. Another property is selectivity. So what does it mean? So every drug has a preferred receptor. So however, it may also bind to others, other receptors with the same or lesser affinity than its preferred receptor. So this happens, uh, for example, an agonist drug. This happens when the receptor of that particular agonist drug has bound to an antagonist. So since the agonist cannot already bound, cannot bind to its receptor because of the presence of, for example, an inverse agonist or an antagonist, so it can also bind to other receptors with lesser affinity or same affinity. So it is said that uh, for those drugs that have a low selectivity, uh, they can produce more side effects because they can bind to multiple receptors. For those drugs with a high selectivity, they can produce lesser side effects because they have, they can only bind to a single type of receptor. So of course, this should not be confused with specificity. Meaning, uh, when we say uh, specificity, this means a drug can only bind to one type of receptor regardless of the dose. Drugs that are specific are uncommon. One example of a highly selective drug is metoprolol. Metoprolol is a drug that is used to um, treat high blood pressure. It blocks the beta receptors. For us to be able to understand or appreciate the action of metoprolol and how selectivity uh, is important in this case is we have to review what are the different types of beta receptors and where are they located. So the beta receptors are located, uh, again we have three types of beta receptors, you have the beta 1, 2, and 3. They are located in different parts of the body, for example the beta 1 predominates in the heart and the beta 2 receptors are present most likely on the smooth muscle of the lungs. Uh, metoprolol is considered to be a beta blocker, meaning that it will block the beta receptors. So, uh, blocking of the beta receptors will of course um, 
prevent no, the ligand from binding to that particular receptor. So the beta-1 receptor mediate the increase in the contractility of the heart or increase in the heart rate. When the beta blocker will block, when the beta blocker, because the beta blocker again no serve as an antagonist, of course it will sit no, into the beta-1 receptor. What will happen is the agonist of this beta-1 receptor will not be able to bind to this receptor. So the agonist or the ligand of this beta-1 receptor are the catecholamines, no, particularly epinephrine and norepinephrine. So again, the metoprolol is an example of the beta blocker and it is said to be selective for the beta-1 receptor. Our example, metoprolol, is classified as a beta-1 selective blocker. This means that it has a preference to block the beta-1 receptor uh, as compared to the beta-2 or the beta-3 receptors. But when we are going to increase the level of metoprolol in the body, it has also the tendency to interact with or block the beta-2 receptor. Uh, this means that when we are going to increase the the concentration of the, this particular drug, it has the tendency to interact also with those receptors wherein it is not uh, those unintended receptors or those receptors having a lower affinity. The third property of the drug receptor interaction is reversibility. So when we say reversibility, that is... Um, it occurs in the level of the drug receptor binding since the latter interaction is generally not permanent or reversible. So the concept on the reversibility of the interaction between the drug to its receptor is of course influenced by the type of the chemical bond between the drug and the receptor. There are types of uh, bond that is considered to be irreversible. For example, when there is a covalent Bond, bonding between the drug and the receptor so it is it has a high energy bond so the the interaction is considered to be irreversible in the case of other types of chemical bonds such as the ionic bond the van der waals you know, the hydrogen bonding as well as the dipole the, the dipole interaction the this type of receptors is considered to be reversible in nature meaning that it can be dissociated at a certain point. Related to this, it is said that most drug interactions are reversible in nature because they have weak chemical bonds. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we also have the irreversible drug interaction. So this is said to be not common and uh, this involves a covalent bond, meaning uh, when we say covalent bond, this is a strong chemical bond you know, between the drug and the receptor. So examples of the drugs that exhibit a strong chemical bond or covalent bond are aspirin and the anti-tumor drugs. So its clinical significance is that when there is an irreversible binding, it can also cause undesirable effects such as the reversal of the effects of the drug or toxicity and mutagenicity or carcinogenicity.